Bruce Parry in drag. You've got to see it to believe it on his trip down the Amazon at this time tomorrow. Global warming now on BBC Two and heated arguments. The last 30 years have seen an epic battle over climate change. As close to scientific fraud as you can get. Defamation. It's a scandal. It's absolutely outrageous. Slander. I'm going to say it bluntly, deliberately bent. It's made front page news. It's dragged scientists out of their ivory towers and into the messy world of politics and big business. But after a monumental struggle, what's emerged as one of the most rigorously tested theories in the history of science. Now, there really is no serious scientific doubt. Even some die-hard skeptics agree. When somebody says that there's no such thing as warming, I well, guess squirm. Yes. The world is getting hotter, and humans are to blame. That doesn't mean the story's over. Far from it. Now there are new and challenging questions for science, and for every one of us to answer. In fact, they're the most vital questions of all. My name's Ian Stewart, lecturer in geology at Plymouth University. I've been following the scientific journey that's revealed how our emissions of carbon dioxide are heating up the planet. In this programme, I explore why it's been so hard, though, to know exactly what the consequences of this will be. How the climate's complexity poses huge challenges for scientists and why this has led to so much confusion over just what we should do about it. This film is about the science of predicting our future climate and what it means for all of us. Right here, right now, everything looks just fine. This is living the dream. It's what people around the world aspire to. If the end of the world is nigh, it certainly isn't reflected in our everyday life. Yet the apparent normality is deceptive, because the world we take for granted is changing. Global warming is happening. Some scientists are saying that we're hurtling towards disaster. Mind you, you'd never guess it from the way that we're living. And there's a reason why it's hard to make sacrifices to stop global warming. You know, I think the problem is that I don't know what it means for me. I don't know how it's going to change my life. So many confusing, sometimes completely contradictory stories about what the future might hold. Drastic and dangerous weather changes. Change too with global warming. Expect to see wine being made in vineyards from the Midlands to Scotland. Harvest winter stars. winters, drier summers because of the changing weather. In one moment we're told it's going to be hotter and drier. Soon it'll be too hot for us to visit the Meds. The next moment is wetter and windier. More floods, and now scientists say, get ready for hurricanes. That warming is going to cause cooling. The stream could stop, leaving Britain with a climate resembling Newfoundland. And even maybe that nothing will change at all. We joined Brian Harrahan as well tonight. He is the weather forecast of the United Kingdom. For In the face of so much uncertainty, it's tempting just to tune out and do nothing. It feels like the more scientists look at the consequences of global warming, the more complicated and unpredictable they become. But that's not a reason for us, or science, to give up. Here we are in the middle of the biggest scientific experiment on the planet. And most people would be like I do, that science should be able to predict the results of that experiment. 
So the challenge for science is to grapple with the complexity of the climate and try and answer the question we want answering most. Just what is global warming going to bring? Accurately predicting the climate is a problem scientists have struggled to solve for over 60 years. Scientists have a tried and tested method for making predictions. They do experiments. The trouble is, there's only one Earth, and it doesn't fit on a laboratory bench. So for years, scientists have faced a single big challenge. How to make a simplified version of the climate system, which they could use for their experiments. They began by taking the idea rather literally. The plan was to create a simplified, small-scale version of the climate system and use it to discover some of the fundamental laws that govern how the climate works. To do that, they turned to something near at hand, the commoner garden dishpan. This is the recipe for the climate. First thing you need is a globe, or in fact, in this case, half a globe. This is one hemisphere, say the southern hemisphere. So if we're looking down on the southern hemisphere, what we need is a polar ice cap. Here we go. To simulate the atmosphere itself, we're going to fill this with water. It's not as strange as it seems. The atmosphere behaves basically like a fluid. Now, in order to see what's going on, it's best to put something into the water. This is just a silvery liquid. Oh, it looks lovely. Now we've got to take it for a spin, because of course our planet rotates, it spins around. That'll do it. Now we've got a sun here in the form of a Bunsen burner. Essentially what we've got here is the heat's coming up, and this is going to be the equator, if you like, where it gains heat, and it's going to lose heat in the centre of the ice cap. It's dead simple. If a bit basic. And if you give it long enough, then you do begin to see some of the familiar parts of the climate system begin to materialise. OK, now we're starting to get some eddies and currents right in... Uh, right at the edge of Antarctica, you can see some bits getting pushed out, swirling around and getting dragged back in again. What's beginning to develop are some of the classic patterns of the world's weather system. After a little while, the patterns get even more distinct, and they actually do bear some resemblance to the weather you see above Antarctica. Not bad for a first effort. But in the 1950s, scientists became real experts at this technique. They used it to recreate complex circulation patterns in the atmosphere. And their experiments proved something vital. The behaviour of the atmosphere followed some simple fundamental laws. It was the beginning of a new science, climate modelling. Thing is though, there's a limit to where a dishpan of boons and burn ice can take you. Simple experiments like these may have helped scientists understand the climate, but they weren't going to be able to predict the future. Fortunately, there was an alternative on the horizon, computers, and they would become central to forecasting the outcome of global warming. Scientists could now take the fundamental laws that they'd begun to discover with the dishpan models and use them to help create a computer model of the climate system. First, they set to work using computers to try and predict the weather. By feeding the reports into computing machines, the new system hopes to obtain electronically a more detailed and accurate picture of what the weather's cooking up for us tomorrow and perhaps a bit further ahead. Take the machine but for all their enthusiasm, there was a problem. The complexity of the climate system overwhelmed their computers. As one researcher admitted, the calculation time for a 24-hour forecast was about 24 hours. But the computers weren't going to be left behind for long. 